Hi, welcome back to Biochemistry Laboratory Techniques. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to go over ultimately how to analyze a gel that you generate through gel electrophoresis. All right, so we're not going to go into the heavy duty mechanics of how you set up the gel. Um, we're just going to assume you made the gel, set it up with the electrodes, you loaded your samples, and you're going to get something that looks like this gel right here. All right, so just to orient you with the relative positions of things on this, just so we're clear, these five things at the top, these lines, these are representative of the wells that you loaded your sample into, okay? And in reality, there's probably a lot more of those on the gel. This is just a simplified picture. Um, this is the negative terminal up here. It's applying a negative electric field. This is the positive terminal down here, so if you have negatively charged things on here, which you do if you did a protein electrophoresis, so all the proteins are going to migrate down towards the positive terminal to some extent because they're attracted to that electric field down there. Okay, so more what we're going to focus on in this video is actually how you analyze the gel itself, and then we're kind of going to use kind of a, um, an example of how you would calculate the molecular weight of an unknown. And the two unknowns are these right here. This is unknown one, and this is unknown two. Okay, how would you determine the unknowns given a molecular weight ladder? Okay, so one of the things um, you'll realize about this gel, and it's something you actually should do with every single gel that you do when you run it, is whenever you do any kind of experiment, you need some kind of standard, a control, something that you know. Well, it turns out that in this kind of experiment, one of these wells, you load with, um, you load with proteins that have known molecular weights. Okay, so for example, I don't know what these proteins are, but apparently I loaded one with that was 2,500 Daltons. Um, this one's uh, 10,000 Daltons. Excuse me, that was 25,000. Um, 10,000 Daltons. This one's 5,000, and then 2,000 Daltons. So these are known molecular weights. All right, and they're starting all off in this well, and then depending on their um, mass, they're going to migrate a certain distance down the gel. And one thing you should notice is that certainly on the top, this 25,000 Daltons is the heaviest. On the bottom, here's the 2,000 Daltons. That's obviously the lightest here. And you'll notice that the lighter one actually moved a farther distance down than any of the heavier ones. And in fact, the heavier it is, the, the, the less it travels down the gel. And that's characteristic of protein electrophoresis when you're doing SDS page. Okay? The heavier proteins will not migrate as far, but the lighter they are, the farther they will go down the gel. Okay? So you should expect lighter ones to be on the bottom or near the bottom. So if I was looking at unknown 1 versus unknown 2, I would say unknown 2 is the heavier one and unknown 1 is the lighter one. So when I do this, if I get something that's not consistent with that, then I probably did the calculation wrong and I need to redo it. Okay, so before you actually get into any kind of math or graphing anything, um, basically what you need to do is you need to look at these bands and you should know what the weights are, but you need to know what distance they migrated. Okay, now where you stick the zero point is somewhat arbitrary. It really doesn't matter. Um, for the purpose of this, the way this is set up, I simply chose to put the zero point at the level of the wells. Okay, and, the, and I don't know what units they are. They would have a unit. Probably you'd do it in centimeters or millimeters, depending, but it doesn't matter what unit you use as long as the number is correct. Um, I don't know, maybe this is centimeters, something. It doesn't matter what the units are. You would want to include those in an experiment if you were doing it. But in any case, you put a ruler basically next to where you have the zero point, and you determine how far, in terms of a distance, it migrated down the gel. So to me, it looks like this one, the 25,000 migrated about one centimeter. Okay? The 10,000, it looks to me like that migrated about 1.8 centimeters. This uh, 5,000 one, I don't know, I'm just kind of estimating, but maybe this one went 3.2 centimeters. And then this 2,000 one looks like it went about 4.5 centimeters. And notice, the farther distance, um, that the farthest distance was traveled by the smallest protein in terms of molecular weight. Okay, and that's exactly what we expect. All right? Okay. And then for these ones over here, we'll come back. Actually, let's do those now, just so we can knock those out. All right, so for this one, 
Um, this unknown, let's see, so this one kind of hits right about three, so I'm probably going to estimate this one traveled about three centimeters. And then for unknown two, maybe do that in yellow, here's unknown two. See, this one is going to go to about here, so I'm probably going to estimate that's about, do this in black, that's about 1.4, 1.4 centimeters, okay? I'm not going to use this piece of data and this piece of data initially. That's going to be something I do last, okay? But it's really important on the molecular weight ladder that has all these bands in them with known molecular weights, it's really important that you determine pretty accurately um, how far they migrated from the zero point, okay? Because you're actually going to use that data to make um, a uh, basically a straight line. And there's an old saying in chemistry and physics that um, and I think it's normally stated for physical chemistry, but uh, physical chemistry is the pitiful attempt to force everything into a straight line. And um, that's actually true of more than just physical chemistry. We're actually doing it here. So what you're going to do is you're going to plot on the x-axis this thing called Rm. Um, and that's basically just the migration distance down the gel. Okay, the migration distances for the molecular weight ladders which is what these points are, would be 1 centimeter, 1.8 centimeters, 3.2, I think, and 4.5. So those are the distances that you have on the x-axis. Now, one interesting thing is that if you plotted on the y-axis just simply molecular weight, you actually would not get a straight line. In fact, the line, that, or the, the curve that you would get is actually more of, more like a, uh, um, a hyperbola, I think is what they call it. I'm not exactly sure, but it's certainly not a straight line. And you could graph it just to see what it would look like. In fact, in the next video, part two of this, we may actually do that just to show you. But it turns out that for all these molecular weights, so 25,000, 10,000, so forth, if you actually take the log base 10 of the molecular weight and plot that against the migration distance, you actually do get a straight line. So the key is you have to take the log base 10 of that molecular weight to do that. Now, I have previously done this, but you can certainly take log base 10 of 25,000, log of 10,000, 5,000, and so forth, okay? Um, and essentially, wherever these hit the y-axis, you, you know, you'll see, you'll get those numbers approximately, okay? So what you do then is you plot every point based on its log of molecular weight and migration distance. And that, in theory, gives you a straight line, okay? And of course, it'll have some R squared value when you use it on, do that on Excel, but also it'll spit out a regression line, okay? Now, one thing, in the past few videos, we've been dealing with things like Beer's Law. Now, when you did Beer's Law, remember that the graph that you got, and again, I'll show you this, the graph when you did Beer's Law just looked, it basically was a, just a straight line. But the thing you should notice whenever you plotted absorbance versus concentration is that the slope of this line was positive. Okay, this line is, has a positive slope. When you do this kind of graph for a gel electrophoresis, you should notice one thing, that the slope is negative. And we notice that, that when I get this linear regression line, this negative 0.3107, that is the slope of this line. And it's a straight line, so it's, a, it's just a number for the slope, but it is negative, and that's, that's something we do expect. The question is, why do we expect that? Well, notice that as the molecular weight increases, what happens to the migration distance? We actually get a smaller migration distance. So the molecular weight and the distance are actually inversely proportional. One goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. So that's why you have this negative slope here. So if you get a positive slope, you did something wrong. It has to be negative. All right. Well, again, um, one thing we, we typically do is we are trying to force everything into, um, basically into a... Uh, a straight line. Well, what is the y-axis? What does y correspond to? Well, it turns out that the y is simply the log of the molecular weight. That's what we see here in the graph. m is just the slope, right? The y-intercept is the y-intercept, but we see this migration distance, right, um, corresponds to x. We see that here in the graph. The x-axis has this migration distance, okay? So, in other words, if we want to figure out what the molecular weight of one of these bands is, unknown 1 or unknown 2, we need to figure out what its migration distance is and then just plug that into this equation and we get the log of its molecular weight, okay? So let's do that for one of these unknowns right here, just for practice, all right? 
So let's do this for unknown one first. And we see, I think, that its migration distance is three centimeters. Okay. Now, just a quick question, and this is also um, this is kind of important. All right. So because I'm not changing any of the units here, and I'm going to assume this, these units down here are centimeters, I don't really care so much about the units. That's not the important thing. But anyways, we would get log of the molecular weight is equal to, I have this, I have negative 0 0.3107. X is our migration distance. Notice R sub M. What's our migration distance for band unknown 1? That's 3 centimeters. So I'm just going to plug this 3 in right there. And I'm going to add on to it 4.699. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to get my calculator. I'm going to go ahead and calculate what this turns out to be. So I'm going to have negative point, or yeah, negative point three zero. Oops, negative point three one zero oh seven. Is that right? Yes. Times three, and I'm going to add 4.699. All right. So it turns out that the log of the molecular weight that I'm getting, this is actually going to be. If I take the log of the molecular weight, it turns out that this is about 3.7669. Now, you may be tempted to say that's the molecular weight, but remember that the y value that we get when we plug that in is actually the log of the molecular weight. So the question is, how do we undo a log? Well, if you remember, the base of this log is 10. That's an important thing also I just want to bring up. This is not the natural log. You may be used to dealing a lot with natural logs. This is not the natural log. This is log base 10. So if I want to undo this logarithm to isolate the molecular weight, I need to raise both of both of these sides by the, I'll raise them by the power 10 to this power basically. All right. So then I get 10 to the log base 10 cancels that, and I get molecular weight is equal to 10 to the 3.7669 power. Let's see what that is. So 10 to that power. And I'm getting that the molecular weight of unknown 1 is about 5, 8, 4, 6. There are some decimals after this, but generally um, it's not really, when you're doing a gel electrophoresis, they're not usually the most accurate techniques. So generally it's, it's okay to terminate it just without any um, numbers after the decimal point. And then I'm just going to say Dalton's. So 5,846 Daltons, and that's, of course, an approximation because gel electrophoresis um, is not, because you're, you're basically, you're basing it off of your own eyeballing from the ruler that's next to this, so it's not the most accurate, so we're just going to truncate it, this number. But does it make sense? Well, this is the question. Well, this unknown band is between 5,000 and 10,000. And 5,846, is that between 10,000 and 5,000? The answer is yes. So this number makes sense because it's between 5,000 Daltons and 10,000 Daltons. So that makes sense. Okay, let's do another example. Let's use the, um, the band right here. And I think this was determined to be 1.4 centimeters. All right, so we're going to do the same kind of thing. All right, exactly the same thing if we want to figure out what the molecular weight is. So let's take log of our molecular weight is equal to, what's the slope of this line? The slope is negative 0 0.3107. The migration distance we determined by measuring of unknown 2 is about 1.4 centimeters. And then I'm going to add on 4.699. One important thing is if you take all this business over here, all of this, and you add it up after you multiply and you get a negative number, something is wrong. Likely what happened is you either measured something wrong on here or you actually typed it into your calculator wrong thing. So negative 0.3107 multiplied by 1.4 centimeters, and then I'm going to add on to that 4.699. And the number that I'm getting for this, so my log of the molecular weight number I'm getting is 4.26402. All right, that's the number. And again, just like in the, in the previous case, if I want to undo this logarithm, it's log base 10. So I have to take 10 to the power of both sides. And remember that log base 10's inverse is, the, is 10 exponent. So that cancels. So the molecular weight is going to be equal to 10 to this. All right, 10 to that. And I get that this molecular weight is about 18,366. Again, there are decimals after this, but because gel electrophoresis is, is 
pretty error prone. Um, I'm just going to truncate it at this number, and this is going to be in units of Daltons. If you wanted to put it in kilodaltons, you could put 18.366 kilodaltons, and those would all be correct too. All right. So that is the basis of how you analyze gel electrophoresis gels. Okay. And by the way, one just piece of terminology: this gel right here that you get with all the bands on it. That's the, the actual uh, technical term for what this is called is, is an electrophoretogram because it's from electrophoresis. So it's sort of like you did chromatography and got a chromatogram. This is from electrophoresis, so it's an electrophoretogram. Okay, if someone ever refers to it as that. Okay, so the key here is that you have this equation right here. It's a straight line equation. Log of the molecular rate equals the slope times the migration distance plus a y-intercept. And again, you're just trying to force it into a straight line so it's very easy to deal with, okay? So your curve or your line should look like this, should have a negative slope, and hopefully this gives you a little bit of intuition on how you analyze the electrophoretogram after you do the gel electrophoresis. So in the next video, we're actually going to look talk about how you actually go about generating this line in Excel, and we'll kind of also do the same thing. We will um, look at another gel, and we'll try to ultimately determine um, the molecular weight of some unknown samples. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications, and thank you for watching.